Chapter 4 Deep Learning Explained 4.1 Introduction to Deep Learning Deep Learning is an advanced subset of machine learning, a field that falls under the broader umbrella of artificial intelligence AI. Machine learning itself revolves around the concept of using algorithms to parse data, learn from that data, and then make informed decisions based on what it has learned. Deep learning takes this a step further, using structures called neural networks that mimic the workings of the human brain. At its core, deep learning enables machines to solve complex problems even when using a dataset that is very diverse, unstructured, and interconnected. A deep learning model is designed to continually analyze data with a logical structure similar to how a human would draw conclusions. To achieve this, deep learning uses a layered structure of algorithms called an artificial neural network. The structure of these neural networks is inspired by the biological neural networks found in animal brains, hence the deep in deep learning refers to the number of layers through which the data is transformed. Each layer of a neural network processes an aspect of the data, passes it to the next layer, and gradually the system recognizes complex features. At the simplest level, deep learning models employ what's known as perceptrons, which are the fundamental building block analogous to a neuron in the human brain. A perceptron takes multiple input signals, processes them, and generates a single output signal. In a neural network, many perceptrons are connected together, and the output of one may become the input of another. Their interconnected nature allows for a complex web of computation and adaptability, increasing the network's ability to learn from and remember data inputs. One of the key aspects that make deep learning distinct from traditional machine learning is its ability to perform feature extraction automatically. Traditional machine learning algorithms often require the input data to be hand-coded by domain experts in a process called feature engineering. Deep learning networks, through their multi-layered structure, learn these features directly from the data, thereby removing the need for this manual intervention. This not only saves time, but also allows the models to identify patterns that may not have been recognized by human experts. The process of training a deep learning model involves adjusting the weights within the neural network. These weights signify the strength of the connections between the units within the network. During the training phase, the model is presented with large amounts of data and a corresponding set of outputs. Through a process called backpropagation, the model adjusts its weights based on the errors it made in its predictions. This process is repeated iteratively, often thousands or millions of times, until the model's weights are finely tuned and the predictions are as accurate as possible. An important characteristic of deep learning models is their depth, which refers to the number of layers through which data passes. Traditionally, neural networks might have had just one or two hidden layers. However, deep learning networks may have dozens or even hundreds. This depth allows the models to recognize patterns at different levels of abstraction, thereby facilitating complex pattern recognition and predictive modeling. The deeper a network, the more intricate the functions it can potentially model. However, this also means that it requires more computational power and training data to function effectively. Despite the power and flexibility of deep learning, Training these models can be a computationally intensive process. This process often requires powerful hardware like graphics processing units, GPUs, or tensor processing units, TPUs, which can process large blocks of data in parallel. Parallel processing allows for much faster computation of the complex mathematical operations that are necessary for training deep learning models. The emergence and advancement of such hardware have been critical in the rise and success of deep learning methodologies. Another significant concept within deep learning is that of overfitting. Overfitting occurs when a model learns the details and noise in the training data to an extent that it negatively impacts the performance of the model on new data. Essentially, the model performs very well on the training data, but poorly on data that it has never seen before. To counteract overfitting, Techniques such as dropout, data augmentation, and early stopping are employed. These techniques help in producing a more generalized model that performs well on unfamiliar data as well. Whilst deep learning models are powerful, they require substantial amounts of training data 
to make accurate predictions. The availability of large datasets is crucial for the effective training of these models. In the absence of substantial data, a model may fail to learn the underlying patterns adequately, leading to subpar performance. Fortunately, the prevalence of digital data collection means that substantial datasets are increasingly available across different fields, contributing to the continuous improvements and applications of deep learning. One of the emerging challenges in deep learning is interpretability. Deep learning models, especially deep neural networks, are often viewed as black boxes because they make predictions or decisions that are not easily understandable by humans. This lack of transparency can be a hurdle, particularly in fields where understanding the decision-making process is critical, such as in healthcare or criminal justice. Efforts are underway to develop techniques to make these models more interpretable, such as by visualizing the activations within the network or approximating the network with a more transparent model. To summarize, deep learning represents a significant leap forward in the capabilities of AI systems. Its ability to learn from vast amounts of data and automate feature extraction has made it an instrumental technology in a variety of applications, from speech and image recognition to natural language processing and autonomous vehicles. As we continue to harness the potential of deep learning, the boundaries of what machines can learn and accomplish are expected to expand even further, marking an exciting era of innovation across multiple domains. 4.2 Convolutional Neural Networks CNNs. Convolutional neural networks CNNs, are specialized types of neural networks used primarily to process pixel data and are therefore widely employed in the field of computer vision. CNNs have proven exceptionally adept at tasks such as image recognition, image classification, and object detection, even outperforming humans in some benchmark tasks. Their architecture is inspired by the visual cortex structure found in animals, which suggests that certain neurons respond to stimuli only in a restricted region of the visual field. A CNN consists of multiple building blocks, beginning with the convolutional layer, which is the core component that gives the network its name. The layer uses learnable filters or kernels designed to detect spatial hierarchies in data by preserving the spatial relationship between pixels. Each filter is convolved across the width and height of the input data, computing the dot product between the filter and input and producing a two-dimensional activation map that conveys certain spatial information. This process is known as the convolution operation. Subsequent to the convolutional layer is the pooling or subsampling layer, which serves to progressively reduce the spatial size of the representation, leading to a reduction in the number of parameters and computation in the network. Pooling helps the model become more invariant to the position of features. The most common pooling method is max pooling, where the maximum element within a specified window size is selected and the rest are discarded. Besides reducing computational load, pooling layers also help in extracting dominant features that are rotational and positional invariant, contributing to the network's ability to classify images with variations. Following pooling layers, the architecture typically includes ReLU, Rectified Linear Unit, Activations Function, which introduces nonlinearity to the system, allowing the network to learn more complex patterns. The ReLU function is applied to the output of the convolution operation and replaces all negative pixel values in the feature map with zero. This nonlinearity is necessary, as most real-world data are nonlinear, and without these functions, a neural network would essentially operate as a linear regression model with limited learning capabilities. CNNs often feature deep stacks of convolutional and pooling layers, leading to the term deep learning. Each convolutional layer is responsible for capturing a variety of features, from simple edges in initial layers to complex patterns in deeper layers. As data passes through each layer, the network's filters adjust through a process of backpropagation where the weights of the filters are updated in inverse proportion to the gradient of the error with respect to the current weight. This error minimization occurs during the training phase and relies heavily on labeled datasets. An essential practice in training convolutional neural networks is data augmentation, 
which artificially enhances the size and variety of the training dataset by making random alterations to the images in such a way that does not change their labels. For instance, slight rotations, translation, zooming, or flipping can help the model generalize better without overfitting on the training data. Data augmentation is considered a regularization technique, assisting in promoting the model's ability to generalize to new datasets that it has never seen before. While convolutional and pooling layers handle feature learning, the latter stages of a CNN typically involve one or more fully connected layers that perform classification based on the features that were identified in prior stages. These layers are similar to the traditional artificial neural network architecture, where each neuron is connected to every neuron in the preceding layer. The fully connected layers integrate high-level reasoning based on the learned features and map them to the desired output format, such as categorizing an image into one of several classes. The final stage of CNNs is the output layer, which often employs a softmax activation function when the task involves classification. The softmax function converts the raw scores computed by the network into probabilities, which are helpful for categorical output. The class with the highest probability score is typically predicted as the output. For regression tasks, different types of output layers may be used, such as a single neuron with a linear activation function. Training a CNN involves using a large set of labeled data and a well-defined cost function to evaluate the model's predictions. A popular cost function used for classification tasks is the cross-entropy loss, which measures the difference between the predicted probability distribution over classes and the true distribution. Minimizing the cross-entropy loss leads to better model performance, as it encourages the predicted distribution to match the target distribution as closely as possible. Furthermore, during the training process, regularization methods such as dropout or L2 regularization are often employed to prevent overfitting. Dropout involves randomly setting a fraction of input units to zero at each update during training time, which helps prevent complex co-adaptations on training data. L2 regularization, on the other hand, adds a penalty term to the cost function proportional to the sum of the squares of the weights, encouraging the model to keep the weights small, leading to simpler models that generalize better. Convolutional neural networks have heralded a new era in machine learning for visual data. Their ability to automatically and adaptively learn spatial hierarchies of features makes them particularly powerful for tasks involving images. By leveraging various architectural strategies such as depth, width, and skipping connections, researchers continue to innovate and improve CNNs for a wide array of applications. Notable networks such as AlexNet, VGGNet, and ResNet have achieved impressive results on benchmark datasets and competitions, solidifying the prominence of CNNs in the field of deep learning. As computational resources continue to advance and more labeled data become available, CNNs are likely to play an even more critical role in future technological developments, including areas such as autonomous vehicles, medical image analysis, in various real-time image and video processing applications. 4.3 Recurrent Neural Networks RNNs. Recurrent Neural Networks RNNs, are a class of artificial neural networks where connections between nodes form a directed graph along a temporal sequence. This allows them to exhibit temporal dynamic behavior for a time sequence. Unlike feedforward neural networks, RNNs can use their internal state memory to process sequences of inputs. This makes them applicable to tasks such as unsegmented, connected handwriting recognition or speech recognition. The core idea behind RNNs is to make use of sequential information. They perform the same task for every element of a sequence, with the output being dependent on the previous computations. One key feature distinguishing RNNs from other neural networks is their hidden state which captures information about what has been calculated so far. In theory, RNNs can remember long sequences of input data. However, in practice, they are often limited by the vanishing gradient problem, which makes it difficult for the RNN to learn and maintain information over long sequences. During the training process, as gradients are backpropagated through the network, they can tend to either vanish, become very small, or explode, become very large, 
making learning unstable. Despite this challenge, RNNs have been successfully used in various fields, including natural language processing and time series prediction. The architecture of an RNN contains neurons with self-connections. Inputs are processed in a sequential manner where each step involves both the present input and the preceding output. The output at each step influences the input at the next step. In mathematical terms at each time step, t, the hidden layer state, h underscore t, is updated using the previous hidden state, h underscore t1, and the current input, x underscore t, typically with a formula like h underscore t equals f w underscore h h underscore t1 plus w underscore x x underscore t plus b, where f is a nonlinear activation function, w underscore h and w underscore x are weight matrices and b is a bias vector. The repeated use of the same weight matrices at each step is a form of weight sharing that is particularly well suited to sequential data. There are several variants of the basic RNN which aim to address its shortcomings, notably the long short-term memory, LSTM, and the gated recurrent unit, GRU networks. LSTMs and GRUs incorporate mechanisms called gates, which control the flow of information. These gates decide what information is to be kept or disregarded during the processing of a sequence, which helps to combat the vanishing gradient problem by maintaining the gradients over larger intervals of time. Consequently, these variants are capable of learning long-range dependencies and are more commonly used in practice when dealing with complex sequence data. Training RNNs requires careful attention to detail. Due to the risk of exploding and vanishing gradients, it is common to use techniques such as gradient clipping, which puts a cap on the size of the gradients, ensuring that they do not become too large during backpropagation. Another common technique is to initialize the network weights in a manner that prevents the gradients from shrinking too quickly. Proper initialization and careful regularization can help to prevent overfitting, which is when the network learns the training data too well, including the noise, and performs poorly on unseen data. RNNs are adept at handling sequences of varying lengths. In practice, however, sequences are usually padded to have the same length before they are batch processed in a neural network. This padding adds extra non-informational data to sequences to make them uniform in length, but introduces additional complexity into the model. The network needs to learn to ignore the padding. To mitigate this, a common solution is to mask the padding during training, which tells the network to skip these elements, effectively preventing them from contributing to the loss and gradient computations. One area where RNNs excel is in processing natural language data. They are naturally well-suited for tasks like language modeling, where the goal is to predict the probability of the next word in a sentence, given the words that have come before it. A trained language model can generate new text by predicting subsequent words from given seed text. RNNs can also perform well in machine translation, where the task is to convert a sequence of text from one language to another. Here, an RNN can be used in an encoder-decoder configuration, where one network encodes the input sequence into a fixed-sized representation, and another network decodes that representation to produce the target sequence. Despite their flexibility, RNNs are not ideal for every kind of sequential task. One limitation is that they do not parallelize as well as feedforward networks because they require processing the input sequence step by step. This inherently sequential nature means that computations cannot be easily distributed across multiple processing units, making training and inference slower compared with architectures that facilitate parallelization. When speed is a crucial factor, other network designs may be more appropriate even if they require more complex engineering to handle sequential data. Another challenge with RNNs is their susceptibility to changes in input sequence lengths. While they can handle varying lengths, their performance can degrade if the test sequences have very different length characteristics from the training sequences. Techniques to deal with this include using attention mechanisms, which allow the network to focus on different parts of the input sequence at different times, rather than relying on a fixed size window or the most recent elements. Attention mechanisms have led to significant improvements in tasks that involve complex input-output relationships and dependencies, 
such as document summarization and question answering systems. In conclusion, recurrent neural networks represent a powerful tool for modeling sequential data with temporal dependencies. While they come with certain challenges and limitations, the development of more advanced variants and techniques, combined with careful modeling and training approaches, allow these networks to be employed effectively across a wide range of applications. Their ability to handle variable length sequences and preserve information across time still make them a valuable asset in the deep learning toolkit, continuing to drive innovation and advancement in fields like natural language processing, speech recognition, and beyond. 4.4 Long Short-Term Memory Networks LSTMs. In the realm of deep learning, Long Short-Term Memory Networks, or LSTMs, stand out for their ability to capture temporal dependencies within data. An LSTM is a type of recurrent neural network, RNN, that can learn and remember over long sequences of information. This is particularly advantageous for tasks such as natural language processing, speech recognition, and time series prediction, where context and the order of data points are crucial for understanding and accurate forecasting. LSTMs were introduced to overcome the limitations of classical RNNs, which struggled to retain information over extended sequences due to the vanishing gradient problem. As an RNN is trained through backpropagation, gradients are calculated to update each parameter in proportion to its contribution to the overall error. However, in standard RNNs, as the sequence length increases, gradients can either vanish to insignificance or explode making learning ineffective over long distances within the sequence. LSTMs address this issue with a gating mechanism that regulates information flow, allowing them to maintain stable gradients and learn from data where dependencies span many time steps. The critical innovation within LSTMs is their internal structure, which consists of a cell state running along the sequence with gates that control the flow of information. These gates, the input gate, the output gate, and the forget gate determine how much of the incoming information should be kept, how much of the cell state should be used to compute the output at each time step, and how much of the existing cell state should be forgotten, respectively. The gates operate by element-wise multiplication of the cell state, with sigmoid activation functions ensuring that their outputs are between 0 and 1, effectively acting as percentages of how much information should pass through. The input gate is responsible for updating the cell state. It decides which values from the cell state should be updated based on the current input and the previous output. When the input gate allows information to pass, a set of candidate values typically generated through a 10H activation function to normalize values between minus 1 and 1 will be added to the cell state. In contrast, the forget gate has the role of pruning unnecessary information from the cell state. As the name suggests, the forget gate allows the cell to forget older data that may no longer be relevant to the task at hand, thus making room for new, relevant information. Moreover, the output gate controls what part of the cell state should be outputted to the next layer or for the current prediction. This enables the LSTM to make stepwise decisions regarding what information is essential at a given time step. The combination of these sophisticated gating mechanisms allows LSTMs to make complex decisions over time, juggling the addition of new information while simultaneously shedding the old. LSTMs are trained using backpropagation through time, BPTT, which adapts the backpropagation algorithm for sequence data. In BPTT, input sequences are fed into the network, which processes them in forward passes through time, and then the error is computed and propagated backward through the network and time steps. This allows for precise adjustments to the weights of the network, taking into account the sequential nature of the data. One of the primary uses of LSTMs has been in the field of text and sequence generation. When trained on a corpus of text, LSTMs can generate new text character by character or word by word by predicting the next character or word in a sequence given the previous sequence. Their ability to remember plot developments, character actions, and style from earlier in the text makes them particularly suited to this task, unlike feedforward networks that process inputs independently. In addition to text generation, LSTMs have shown remarkable performance in speech recognition systems. They can model the temporal variations in audio signals, 
which is critical for distinguishing between similar sounding words and phrases that may differ slightly in speech duration or intonation. This capability has been leveraged not only for recognizing speech, but also for generating text transcripts in real time, which has significant implications for accessibility and human computer interaction. Another substantial application of LSTMs is in forecasting problems where they have been used extensively in financial markets to predict stock prices and in meteorology for weather forecasting. By capturing long-term dependencies in time series data, LSTMs can predict future events based on patterns observed in historical data. It's important to note, however, that the stochastic nature of these domains implies a level of unpredictability that no algorithm can fully overcome. Nevertheless, LSTMs represent one of the most powerful tools available for time series analysis. Despite their effectiveness, LSTMs also come with their own set of challenges. One such challenge is the time required for training due to the complex architecture and extensive dependencies in data. This complexity can also lead to overfitting, where the network learns the training data too closely and fails to generalize to unseen data. Consequently, careful design, regularization techniques, and parameter tuning are essential to mitigate these issues and harness the full potential of LSTMs. In conclusion, LSTMs have significantly contributed to the progress in machine learning by providing a robust architecture for learning from sequence data. Their ability to capture long-term dependencies has unlocked a plethora of applications that would be challenging, if not impossible, with other types of neural networks. While they are not without their limitations, the continued research and optimization of LSTMs and related models highlight their critical role in advancing the field of deep learning. 4.5 Autoencoders Autoencoders are a type of artificial neural network used to learn efficient codings of in-labeled data, typically for the purpose of dimensionality reduction. An autoencoder learns to compress the input data into a lower dimensional code and then reconstruct the output from this representation to match the input as closely as possible. The network is trained to minimize the difference between the input and the output, which forces it to capture the most important features in the compressed representation. The architecture of an autoencoder consists of two main parts, the encoder and the decoder. The encoder processes the input data and compresses it into a latent space representation, also known as an encoded vector or code. This encoded vector is a compact representation of the input data, where the dimensionality is less than the original input. The encoder can be conceptualized as a function that maps the input space to the encoded space. The decoder, on the other hand, takes the encoded vector as input and reconstructs the original data. The reconstruction is not always perfect, especially when the encoding has considerably less dimensionality than the input data, as some information loss is to be expected. The decoder can be viewed as an inverse function that maps the encoded space back to the original input space. The ultimate goal during the training of an autoencoder is to enable the decoder to reconstruct the input data as accurately as possible from the reduced representation. Training an autoencoder is an unsupervised learning process. Unsupervised learning refers to the method of learning patterns from unlabeled data. During training, the autoencoder learns by adjusting the weights of its network to minimize the reconstruction error. The reconstruction error is the difference between the input and the output of the autoencoder. A common measure of this error is the mean squared error, MSE, although other measures can be used depending on the specific characteristics of the data. Autoencoders are applied in a variety of domains such as image denoising, dimensionality reduction for visualization, feature extraction, and more. For instance, when working with images, an autoencoder can learn to remove noise from the pictures. By training on noisy images and using clean images as the target output, the autoencoder learns to map the noisy input to a noise-free reconstruction, effectively learning to denoise the input. To increase the compression capability and efficiency of an autoencoder, techniques such as sparsity constraint are often employed. By adding a sparsity penalty to the loss function, 
the autoencoder is incentivized to use fewer activation units in the hidden layers. This encourages the model to learn more robust features that are useful in reconstructing the input data, rather than relying on capturing noise or other irrelevant aspects of the input. Another variant of autoencoders is the variational autoencoder, VAE, which applies principles from probabilistic graphical models and variational Bayesian methods to autoencoding. Unlike traditional autoencoders, which learn to map input data to a fixed vector in a latent space, VAEs model the latent representation as a probability distribution. This probabilistic approach allows for the generation of new data samples by sampling from the learned distribution, which can be especially useful in generative tasks. Deep autoencoders can be constructed by stacking multiple layers of encoders and decoders. The depth of these architectures allows the model to learn more complex and abstract representations of the data. However, with increased depth comes the challenge of training these networks effectively. Deep autoencoders require careful initialization of weights, appropriate selection of activation functions, and often benefit from pre-training each layer in an unsupervised fashion before fine-tuning the entire network for reconstruction. One of the key advancements in the training of autoencoders is the use of denoising techniques. By intentionally introducing noise into the input data and training the autoencoder to recover the original noise-free data, the model becomes more robust to small perturbations in the input. This process helps the autoencoder learn the most salient features that define the data, rather than memorizing the noise or incidental details. Lastly, Convolutional autoencoders combine the autoencoder architecture with the convolutional neural network, CNN framework, which is known for its success in processing grid-structured data-like images. Convolutional layers within the encoder capture the spatial hierarchies and patterns in the input data, such as textures and shapes in images, while the decoder reconstructs the input from these complex feature mappings. This structure is particularly advantageous for image-related tasks, as it efficiently handles the high dimensionality and complexity inherent to visual data. 4.6 Generative Adversarial Networks, GANs Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs, are a class of artificial intelligence algorithms used within the field of deep learning. GANs were introduced in 2014 by Ian Goodfellow and his colleagues, and have since been considered one of the most significant innovations in AI. The primary goal of GANs is to generate data that is indistinguishable from actual, real-world data. They achieve this through a framework that pits two neural networks against each other in a game-theoretic scenario. This dynamic is what gave GANs their name. The networks essentially act as adversaries, improving through competition. The architecture of a GAN is composed of two main components, the generator and the discriminator. The generator's role is to create data that mimic the true data distribution. It generates new data instances from random noise initially. As it learns, these instances become increasingly similar to the authentic data. Conversely, the discriminator's role is to evaluate the data presented to it, distinguishing between actual data and the synthetic data produced by the generator. This evaluation is framed as a binary classification problem where the discriminator must decide if the input is real or fake. Training a GAN is a delicate process and can be conceptualized as a minimax two-player game. The generator, G, aims to minimize a certain objective function while the discriminator, D, aims to maximize the same function. Specifically, the discriminator tries to maximize the probability of correctly classifying both real and generated data while the generator tries to produce samples that the discriminator will misclassify as real. This framework creates a feedback loop where both networks iteratively improve their methods. The generator learns to produce more realistic data, while the discriminator learns to better discern the authenticity of data. The loss function that both networks aim to optimize is known as the adversarial loss. It is typically formulated such that, when one network improves its performance, the other is challenged to improve as well. As a result, both networks theoretically converge to a point where the generator produces perfect replicas of the real data, 
and the discriminator is left guessing at 50% accuracy, unable to distinguish real from fake. This state of equilibrium is referred to as a Nash equilibrium, a concept borrowed from game theory. One of the significant challenges in training GANs is maintaining the balance between the generator and the discriminator. If either becomes too powerful too quickly, it can dominate the other, leading to a failure mode known as mode collapse. In mode collapse, the generator starts producing a limited variety of outputs, and the discriminator quickly learns to recognize these limited patterns. Various techniques and modifications to the original GAN architecture, such as introducing batch normalization or using different loss functions, have been proposed to mitigate this issue. GANs require careful hyperparameter tuning to ensure stable training. Hyperparameters such as learning rates, the momentum of gradient updates, and the number of generator updates per discriminator update can dramatically affect the success of the convergence. Moreover, because GANs training involves a dynamic process rather than the direct minimization of a set objective, the choice of initial parameters and the random seed can have noticeable effects on the output of the GAN. Apart from purely generating data, GANs have practical implications in a wide range of applications. They can be used for data augmentation in machine learning, where the synthetic data generated by a GAN are used to train other models, thereby improving their performance. In image processing, GANs have been used successfully for tasks such as super-resolution, photo-realistic image generation, and style transfer. They also hold promise in fields like medical imaging where they can be used to generate synthetic data that maintains the structural properties of real medical scans without compromising patient privacy. GANs have also had a profound impact on the creative industries. In art and design, for instance, they have the ability to generate novel textures, patterns, and even complete artworks that can either stand alone or inspire human artists. In the domain of music, researchers are experimenting with GANs to create new compositions, demonstrating the versatility of these networks beyond visual data. Fashion and advertising industries, too, are exploring the potential of GANs to design new products and visual materials. Ethical considerations are paramount when discussing the capabilities of GANs. The technology can be used for questionable purposes, such as creating deepfakes, synthetic media where a person's likeness is replaced with someone else's, raising concerns around authenticity and misinformation. It is crucial for developers and users of GAN technology to remain aware of these implications and engage in discussions about responsible use. GANs continue to evolve as researchers introduce new variations and improvements. Some of these advancements aim to reduce the training difficulties, while others focus on expanding the range of potential applications. Ongoing research and development in GANs are likely to bring forward new capabilities, as well as novel solutions to their current limitations. Despite these challenges, GANs remain a highly active area of research given their ability to generate high-quality, diverse, and compelling results across various domains. Overall, generative adversarial networks represent a remarkable leap forward in the development of generative models. Their impact stretches across both technical and non-technical fields, indicating their importance not only as a scientific advancement, but as a tool with real-world utility. As research progresses, their potential applications continue to expand, signifying the broad possibilities that GANs offer to the world of AI and beyond. 4.7 Deep Reinforcement Learning Deep Reinforcement Learning, DRL, represents a synthesis of reinforcement learning, RL, and deep learning. This combination enables the implementation of powerful algorithms capable of learning complex behaviors by interacting with a diverse range of environments. Reinforcement learning itself is a type of machine learning where an agent learns to make decisions by performing certain actions and observing the results of those actions. The agent receives rewards or penalties based on the outcomes, which it uses to inform future decisions. Deep learning provides the function approximation capabilities that allow an RL agent to interpret high-dimensional input data, such as images, which would be impractical with traditional RL algorithms alone. In deep reinforcement learning, D 
deep refers to the use of deep neural networks to approximate the traditionally linear algorithms used in classical RL approaches. Deep neural networks have proven to be highly effective in identifying patterns within vast datasets, thus enabling deep reinforcement learning algorithms to process and evaluate complex high-dimensional inputs. For instance, while traditional RL can struggle with pixel-based inputs due to the sheer number of potential states, Deep RL uses convolutional neural networks, which have been designed to understand images, to effectively reduce the input space into a more manageable form. A fundamental concept of reinforcement learning is the policy. In DRL, the policy is typically represented by a deep neural network, and it defines the behavior of the agent. The goal of the agent is to learn a policy that maximizes some notion of cumulative reward over time. To achieve this, deep reinforcement learning employs algorithms like Q-learning and policy gradients, adding layers of neural networks to learn and approximate the optimal policy. Through training, the weights in the neural network are adjusted to improve the policy and thereby improve the performance of the agent within its environment. Training a deep reinforcement learning agent involves interfacing the agent with its environment to gather data about the state of the environment and the outcomes of different actions. Each action results in a new state and a reward signal that inform the agent of the action's immediate value. The challenge is to not only value immediate rewards, but also to consider the long-term consequences of actions, which is where the deep learning aspect becomes crucial. By representing states and actions in high-dimensional spaces, DRL enables the agent to infer the long-term value of states, which is less tangible in environments with delayed rewards. Exploration versus exploitation is a core challenge within DRL. The agent must balance exploring the environment to discover new strategies with exploiting known strategies to gain rewards. Exploration enhances the agent's knowledge of the environment, allowing the neural network to learn about states and actions that weren't previously considered. On the other hand, exploitation focuses on maximizing rewards based on existing knowledge. The Epsilon Greedy strategy is a widely used technique to address this challenge, where the agent occasionally selects a random action with the probability Epsilon, fostering exploration, while mostly choosing the best known action. One pivotal application of deep reinforcement learning is in the realm of gameplay, where agents are trained to achieve superhuman performance in complex games. For instance, Google DeepMind's AlphaGo program famously defeated the world champion in the game of Go using DRL techniques. AlphaGo's neural networks were trained using vast amounts of data from human-played games and were further refined through self-play. This training method reinforced the agent's ability to predict the outcomes of moves and to evaluate the position on the Go board. Another significant application is in robotics, where DRL can be employed for teaching robots to perform tasks autonomously. Tasks that require a series of physical actions, such as picking up and assembling objects, can be learned through a process where the robot incrementally adjusts its actions to maximize the cumulative reward, measured by the successful completion of the task. The neural networks within the DRL system learn to map sensory inputs, such as images from a camera mounted on the robot, to motor outputs that control the robot's movements. In addition to applications in gaming and robotics, DRL has been proposed as a solution to various complex decision-making problems in areas such as healthcare, autonomous vehicles, and financial services. In healthcare, for instance, DRL can be used to personalize treatment plans by learning from patient data, leading to potentially better outcomes and resource utilization. For autonomous vehicles, DRL can help in the development of control systems that can better deal with the uncertainties of real-world driving. In the financial sector, DRL can be applied to optimize trading strategies by learning to interpret market conditions and execute trades that maximize financial returns. Despite its potential, deep reinforcement learning comes with challenges such as the requirement for large amounts of data and computational resources. Training deep RL agents is often a resource-intensive process that can take significant time and energy. Moreover, DRL models can be inherently unstable or difficult to train 
due to the complex dynamics involved in learning both a policy and a value function simultaneously. The high variance in outcomes can be problematic, and techniques such as experience replay, target networks, and reward shaping are used to address these issues and stabilize the training process. As we look forward, the field of deep reinforcement learning remains a vibrant area of research. New algorithms and methods are continually being proposed to improve the efficiency, stability, and generality of DRL. For instance, multi-agent reinforcement learning explores how multiple agents can learn together or against each other, leading to sophisticated strategies and behaviors that extend beyond what a single agent could achieve. Transfer learning and meta-learning within DRL are also exciting frontiers, aiming to build upon learned knowledge and apply it to new but related tasks or environments, thereby reducing the need for extensive retraining. In summary, deep reinforcement learning represents a powerful paradigm in artificial intelligence, combining the perception capabilities of deep learning with the decision-making prowess of reinforcement learning to tackle complex problems. Its impact is already evident across various domains, and ongoing research is pushing the boundaries further, making it a crucial area of study for anyone interested in the future of AI and its applications. 4.8 Deep Learning in Practice Deep learning, a subset of machine learning, represents the next evolution of artificial intelligence. This practice involves training computational models, commonly known as neural networks, to perform tasks by recognizing complex patterns in vast amounts of data. Deep learning models improve their performance as they are exposed to more data, making them particularly effective for applications with large datasets. The implementation of deep learning in practice has revolutionized various industries, leading to significant advances in areas like image recognition, natural language processing, and autonomous systems. The architecture of a deep learning neural network is inspired by the biological structure of the human brain. Yet unlike our static neural frameworks, these artificial networks are flexible and adaptive. They consist of layers of interconnected nodes or neurons, with each layer designed to transform its input data into a more abstract and composite representation. The initial layers capture basic features, with the complexity increasing as the information progresses through subsequent layers. This hierarchical nature of learning is what enables deep neural networks to handle tasks that involve understanding intricacies at different levels, from simple edges in an image to the understanding of complex objects and their interactions. Training a deep learning model involves a process called backpropagation, where the model learns from its mistakes. During training, the model makes predictions on input data, compares its predictions to the actual outcomes, and calculates the error. This error is then fed back through the network, adjusting the weights of the connections between neurons in a way that minimizes the error. The magnitude of adjustments is governed by a learning rate, and the entire process is repeated numerous times, often on the same data, to ensure that the model learns the patterns effectively. The convergence of the model on a set of weights that yields minimal error signifies the completion of the training process. The data used for training deep learning models is crucial to their performance. High-quality, labeled datasets are a prerequisite for supervised learning tasks where the network learns to predict an output from a given input. For instance, in image classification tasks, a dataset would consist of images paired with labels that describe what is depicted in the images. The diversity and volume of this training data determine the model's ability to generalize and perform accurately on new, unseen data. Thus, data collection, cleaning, and labeling are critical foundational steps in the deep learning workflow. Unsupervised learning is another practice wherein the models attempt to find patterns without pre-labeled data. For example, deep learning can be used to cluster similar data points together, identify anomalies, or generate new data instances mimicking the input data. Reinforcement learning, wherein an agent learns to make decisions by performing actions in an environment and receiving rewards, is another area where deep learning models are applied. Each type of learning has its specific use cases and requires different approaches for data preparation and model training. Hyperparameter tuning 
is a noteworthy step in the practice of deploying deep learning models. Hyperparameters are the configuration settings used to structure the learning process, which includes the number of layers in a model, the number of neurons in each layer, the type of activation function, and the learning rate, among others. Selecting the optimal set of hyperparameters vastly improves a model's learning capability and its final performance. This selection is usually done through trial and error, grid search, random search, or more sophisticated methods like Bayesian optimization. Once a model is trained and its hyperparameters are fine-tuned, the evaluation phase begins. It involves assessing the model's performance on a set of previously unseen data, known as a validation dataset. Performance metrics differ depending on the task. Accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score for classification tasks, mean squared error or mean absolute error for regression tasks. A model showing high performance on the validation set is considered to be good at generalizing from its training data and can be deployed in a live environment. Deploying a deep learning model into production means integrating it into the existing technological framework to perform the function it was designed for. This could involve embedding the model into a software or hardware system, where it can process real-time data and provide insights or automated decisions. Deployment also entails continuous monitoring of model performance, ensuring it scales with the increasing volumes of data and remains reliable over time. Adjustments and retraining may be necessary if the model's performance degrades, which could happen as the data it is processing evolves or as new types of data are introduced. With the rapid spread of deep learning applications comes the need to address concerns such as computational hardware requirements. Deep learning models, particularly those with numerous layers and neurons, require significant computational resources to process the large amounts of data they use for training. Specialized hardware like graphics processing units, GPUs, and tensor processing units, TPUs, are often employed to accelerate the training process. These technologies are designed specifically to handle the parallel processing capabilities needed by deep learning algorithms. There are also considerations to make regarding the ethical and social implications of deep learning. Bias in training data can lead to skewed models that make unfair or discriminatory predictions. For instance, a model trained on facial recognition may perform poorly when exposed to faces from races that are underrepresented in the training data. Therefore, it's essential to ensure datasets are diverse and accurately representative to avoid perpetuating biases. Transparency in how models make their decisions is another area that requires attention, as many deep learning models act as black boxes, with their inner workings being opaque. The use of deep learning in practice continues to expand, propelling advances in technology and industry. From everyday applications in our smartphones, like voice assistance and recommendation systems, to breakthroughs in medical diagnostics and drug discovery, the impact of deep learning is profound and multifaceted. As computational power increases and algorithms become more refined, the scope for deep learning's application only broadens, paving the way for innovations that were previously considered to be within the realm of science fiction. The practical implementation of deep learning, with its challenges and potential, is a testament to the strides made in artificial intelligence and a signal of the further transformations to come. While this chapter has explored the fundamental aspects of deep learning in practice, it is important to remember that the field is dynamic. Ongoing research and development are constantly refining algorithms, discovering new applications, and addressing current limitations. Practitioners and researchers alike must stay abreast of these changes to leverage the full capabilities of deep learning. The promise and power of deep learning to extract meaning from data and automate complex tasks will be key drivers in the next wave of technological innovation. As organizations and individuals continue to harness this potential, the importance of understanding and implementing deep learning in practical, socially responsible, and efficient ways becomes ever more crucial. 4.9 Challenges and Limitations of Deep Learning Deep learning, a subset of machine learning, has pushed the boundaries of what machines can do, often inspired by the human brain's structure and functioning. However, 
Despite its significant contributions to advancements in technology, deep learning is not without its challenges and limitations. One critical challenge pertains to the requirement of large amounts of data. Deep learning models are data hungry. They need vast amounts of training data to develop the ability to generalize well. This need can create barriers to entry for smaller organizations that may not have access to the same quantity of data as larger entities. Additionally, acquiring and labeling the necessary data to train these models can be a time-consuming and expensive process. Another limitation is the interpretability or the lack thereof. Deep learning models are often referred to as black boxes due to their complex nature and the difficulty in understanding how they derive their outputs. This opacity can be problematic, especially in sectors like finance or healthcare where explainability is crucial for compliance and trust. While recent research focuses on increasing the transparency of these models, it remains a significant hurdle to their widespread adoption in certain industries. Moreover, computational requirements pose a significant challenge. Deep learning models, particularly those with many layers and nodes, known as deep neural networks, require substantial computational power. This need translates into higher energy consumption and necessitates access to modern, often expensive hardware like graphics processing units, GPUs, or tensor processing units, TPUs. Such costs can preclude smaller companies and researchers from accessing deep learning for their projects, creating a barrier to innovation and diversity in the field. Training deep learning models also comes with the possibility of overfitting. This issue occurs when a model is too complex and learns to fit not only the underlying patterns in the training data, but also the noise. Consequently, despite high accuracy on training data, the model performs poorly on unseen data because it lacks the ability to generalize. Preventing overfitting necessitates careful tuning of the model's architecture, an art requiring significant expertise and experience in machine learning. The vulnerability of deep learning models to adversarial attacks is a serious concern. These attacks involve intentionally manipulating input data with slight, often imperceptible, changes that lead the model to make incorrect predictions or classifications. The sensitivity of deep learning models to such attacks underscores the difficulty in deploying them in security-critical areas. Researchers are actively developing defensive techniques, but the problem is far from being completely resolved. Furthermore, the issue of data bias and fairness is intrinsic to the data used in training deep learning models. If the training data reflects existing inequalities or biases, the model will likely perpetuate or even exacerbate these biases. This replication of bias can result in discriminatory and unethical AI applications, a risk that demands meticulous attention to the collection and vetting of training data and continuous monitoring of the models in use. Another point of consideration is the environmental impact of deep learning. The massive computational power and energy required for training and running complex models contribute to carbon emissions, raising concerns about the sustainability of deep learning practices. The AI research community is becoming increasingly cognizant of this issue, seeking ways to make energy-efficient models without compromising performance, yet this remains a challenging balance to strike. Furthermore, the rapid development of deep learning models often outpaces the regulatory framework necessary to ensure their safe and ethical application. Laws and guidelines on data privacy, usage rights, and AI ethics are still evolving and often lag behind technological advancements. This lag presents a challenge in ensuring that deep learning is used responsibly and aligns with societal values and norms. Market-driven pressures can also incentivize the deployment of deep learning applications before they are fully ready or understood. Companies are keen to gain a competitive edge or break into new markets, potentially overlooking the importance of thorough testing and responsible AI practices. This race can lead to premature adoption, where the repercussions of errors or failure are not entirely comprehended until after the fact. Lastly, there's the substantial learning curve for individuals seeking to enter the field of deep learning. The complexity of the concepts, combined with the pace at which the technology evolves, 
can be daunting for students and professionals. The education systems are often playing catch up with the technology, and the availability of experts who can teach and guide new learners is limited. The industry demands a high level of proficiency in mathematics, algorithms, and programming, all of which require substantial time and effort to master. In essence, while deep learning harnesses unprecedented potential, the challenges and limitations mentioned require careful consideration. These obstacles need to be addressed holistically for deep learning to realize its full potential positively and responsibly. Ongoing research and collaboration across disciplines, industry, and governments will be pivotal in surmounting these hurdles. As the field matures, it is hoped that other challenges will be identified and addressed with the same vigor, ensuring that deep learning contributes beneficially to society. 4.10 Case Studies in Deep Learning Deep learning, a subfield of machine learning, has significantly impacted various fields. It uses algorithms known as neural networks, which are inspired by the structure and function of the human brain. These networks are composed of layers of interconnected nodes or neurons that process data in a hierarchical manner. The complexity and abstraction of the data representation increase with each successive layer. This section elucidates several illustrative case studies where deep learning has been applied to demonstrate its transformative potential across different domains. One prominent case study is the use of deep learning in computer vision for facial recognition systems. Powered by convolutional neural networks, CNNs, these systems can process and analyze vast amounts of image data to identify and verify individuals with high accuracy. Companies like Facebook employ these algorithms to tag users in photos. Meanwhile, governments and security agencies use facial recognition for surveillance and law enforcement. The ability of CNNs to automatically learn and improve from a large set of labeled images provides a powerful tool that continues to evolve and become more precise with more data and training. In another instance, deep learning has revolutionized the field of natural language processing NLP. Tools like Google Translate and OpenAI's GPT series leverage deep neural networks to understand and interpret human language with remarkable efficiency. They employ complex models such as long short-term memory networks, LSDMs, and transformers to parse and generate language. These AI models can perform tasks such as language translation, question answering, and even creative writing at a level that is increasingly comparable to human performance. This advancement enables seamless communication and information exchange across language barriers, enhancing global connectivity. Healthcare is another domain where deep learning has made significant strides. Researchers have developed algorithms that can analyze medical images to detect diseases, such as cancer, more accurately and swiftly than seasoned radiologists. These neural networks process tens of thousands of images to learn patterns associated with various medical conditions, and they are progressively improving patient outcomes by providing efficient and accurate diagnostics. For instance, Google's DeepMind has developed AI that can detect over 50 types of eye diseases from 3D retinal scans with 94% accuracy, supporting early detection and treatment. In the automotive industry, companies like Tesla and Waymo have been leveraging deep learning for developing autonomous vehicle technology. Deep neural networks, DNNs, coupled with extensive sensor data, allow self-driving cars to interpret complex scenarios and make real-time decisions on the road. These networks can recognize and classify various objects, such as pedestrians and traffic signals. They can also predict the behavior of other drivers and navigate accordingly, making autonomous driving a viable reality. Continuous learning from large datasets collected from real-world driving conditions keeps refining these systems to cope with the unpredictable nature of traffic environments. The advancement in reinforcement learning, a type of deep learning, has led to breakthroughs in strategic game playing. DeepMind's AlphaGo famously defeated a world champion Go player by learning strategies of the ancient game through study of millions of past games and through self-play. Reinforcement learning algorithms strengthen their decision-making capabilities by exploring and exploiting different strategies to maximize rewards. AlphaGo's victory 
was a testament to the potential of these algorithms to handle complex problems with many variables. In the realm of finance, deep learning is increasing the sophistication of algorithmic trading. By analyzing massive datasets that include historical prices, financial news, and market sentiments, deep learning models can identify patterns and predict market fluctuations more accurately than traditional methods. This deep learning-driven approach to trading allows for the execution of high-frequency trades at volumes and speeds beyond human capabilities. Hedge funds and investment banks have been actively adopting these technologies to provide themselves an edge in a highly competitive market. Deep learning has also found application in the entertainment industry, particularly in video games and movie production. Game developers use it to create more realistic non-player character NPC behaviors, enhancing the gaming experience by providing gamers with challenging, lifelike opponents. In movies, visual effects companies use deep learning for motion capture and to improve the realism of computer-generated imagery CGI. This technology not only enhances the visual experience, but also reduces the time and cost associated with the production process. In e-commerce, recommendation systems powered by deep learning have transformed online shopping experiences. Platforms like Amazon and Netflix analyze user interaction data through deep learning algorithms to predict what products or content a user is likely to enjoy next. This personalized approach not only improves customer satisfaction, but also drives sales by increasing the likelihood of customers purchasing recommended items. The complexity of these algorithms means they can discern intricate patterns in user behavior, making for very effective product match recommendations. Environmental monitoring has also benefited from the application of deep learning. This technology is being used to predict weather patterns, assess the health of crops, track wildlife populations, and monitor the effects of climate change. Satellite images and sensor data can be processed using CNNs to detect changes in the environment, enabling better informed decisions for conservation efforts and to mitigate the effects of natural disasters. The capacity to analyze large-scale environmental data at high resolutions exemplifies how deep learning can contribute to sustainable development goals. Each case study illustrates the versatile and potent nature of deep learning technology. The breadth of its applications is broad and growing, shedding light on how deeply integrated and transformative deep learning is becoming in various industries. Ongoing research and increased data availability will likely lead to further innovations and improved models. As deep learning technologies mature, they promise to unlock efficiencies and enhance capabilities across many facets of modern life. This progress represents a monumental leap in computational intelligence heralding an era where artificial neural networks offer solutions to some of the most complex challenges faced by humans.